Now I pre-mix my colors because it takes quite a while to get the uh, colors where you want them for this particular exercise. Is my head in the way? Can you see okay? Is my is it in the way now? Yes. Okay. So. <laughs> now the first wash that's all wet and wet, pr principally, and um, you can see here. Now the drawing's a little more detailed, so I don't. You can probably see it. I wouldn't ac actually have it that uh, detailed. I would probably erase a lot of these lines because once they're in there and they get sealed in, it's hard to get rid of them. Um, John, is that just a regular graphite pencil that you use? Yes, yeah. actually, it's either 2B or HB, I'm not sure which. And uh, so this part here is the first wash. It's all wet and wet with two tones. One will be basic skin color and then the shadow shape down in here. The next will be the hair. That's a different, different mass. It's a different uh, wash. And then, of course, the clothing, and then maybe a background. I'm maybe dispense with some of that so I can get to the next step. And uh, but it's wet and wet. Now, the important thing about wet and wet is um, if you're going to go into a wet surface with the color, with the with the tone, it, to prevent it from spreading, you know, these little spider things go out, and uh, um, they go where you don't want them to go. So you make sure you pick up your pigment, wipe it on the brush, get the excess water out of it, and then when you put it in there, it will bleed just a little bit, but it will soften the edge. And um, uh, so that's um, how you avoid that. <clears throat> now the objective here is we're going to clobber some paper. <laughs> and I always say that to myself because um, it lowers my expectations <laughs> and helps me get through it. So, as I say, the first thing is uh, wet and wet, and I'm going to go around the eyes. And the reason I go around the eyes and the mouth is, and principally the eyes, is I don't want to contaminate the eye with the skin or the um, shadow color. And so we'll just go right, we're going to go right for it here. We'll go wet and wet. And I go right up into the hair, it doesn't matter because the hair is going to be a lot darker. And um, you go around the eye. Now I have a, my first skin, skin tone is a combination of, and I should say I only really use three colors. Principally, I have others in the palette as well, but generally just three, and that's cerulean blue, uh, <coughs> rose matter genuine, and uh, yellow ochre. And um, uh, a lot of the paintings, I've, most of them have done with that particular uh, shade, and now we go around the highlight because we don't want to lose that. You ever use an S for it, John? I, I, I actually have it here, but I probably won't use it. I'll, I'll explain it when I get there. But uh, if it's a complicated background and I, I don't want to, uh, you know, contaminate the rest of the painting, I might use, might use it. Or if I'm <coughs> going to do jewelry or, uh, you know, something that requires um, precision that you like the highlight of the eye. Sometimes I'll mask out the highlight of the eye so that I, I don't have to worry about it when I go over it and screw it all up. <laughs> I'll go around the mouth. Actually you could go into the mouth with the skin color but uh, this is kind of what I've always kind of done it this way, so um, uh, what's another, you know, 30 seconds? And, you know, I'm not going to be that concerned about edges at this point because, um, it's, you know, you've got plenty of time to work 
edges that ordinarily you might want to spend a few you know, minutes on or hours or something. And a lot of what I do in the end is dry brush, which I really, it's not the kind of thing you can demonstrate because you've got to, oh, I see what he's doing. <laughs> and it's kind of, it's like a Zen moment because you're just, just playing around with it. You don't have to do too much thinking. And, uh, um, and it's, time, it's time consuming, but on the other hand, it's not stressful. So, and you know, as artists, we get kind of uh, worried about stress every now and then. So I think that's good. That's Do you have a point. particular brand or a few brands that you use for your paints? Yes, uh, almost exclusively Winter Newton. There are a couple that I, one of them, which I, one of my favorite colors is, is Brilliant Orange, and I, I think that's maybe my Mary or somebody. But, and I'll be using it so you'll get a chance to see it. How fantastic! It's just a beautiful transparent um, <clears throat> uh, pigment color. Really brings everything to life. It's really, really good. And I have a couple other things in there too. I don't know, but essentially it's all um, Winsor Newton. And that's because I got started with that, and I'm kind of comfortable with it, and I don't really. Um, what do you call it? Don't really um, need to experiment, especially in some pigments like burnt sienna, for example. Mm -hmm. That that can tend to be a little bit of a, a you see a lot of differences sometimes when um, when um, you do use that color for different brands and so forth. So okay, so let's just see. now the, the thing about cerulean blue. Fantastic blue, I love it. But <laughs> it's sedimentary, yes. so if you do not mix it properly, uh, it will granulate out. <clears throat> now this is just a basic skin color, and it goes. Well, I'll go over everything. I might leave a little highlight there. So I got to wipe it off a little bit just to get the excess water out. Going over everything, essentially. Around the eyes. Goofy goof there. That's not critical. Okay, now this is still wet, so I'm going to come back in now with a shadow color. And uh, you can't see, I don't know if you can see it in the palette. It's, it looks red here, but it isn't. It's. Um, so like a warm, dark, warm gray. But here's where the cerulean can get really um, uh, problematic. Again, I wipe the brush, get the excess water out of it. So, so what colors are in that? Uh, mostly, well in this case, I think I used uh, some, some cerulean. Uh, alizarin crimson. Oh, okay, instead, alizarin. instead of, uh, instead of, um, uh, what did I say? You said cerulean. Instead of rose matter genuine, oh. because the shadows are quite dark, and um, uh, you want to you know, try to—it's a time saver too, because otherwise uh, you might spend a lot of time just adding darks to it. But if you get a shadow shape in there right away, 
then um, it's a time saver. You're already, you know, you're already doing some modeling, and uh, something there, something under the eye, under the nose, or under the nose. And that's it. Nothing's pretty fancy, except that you're getting rid of the white of the paper, and uh, in the end, you'll need it to help judge your the rest of your values. So, yeah. good grief. Oh. Oh. <laughs> hey! hey. <laughs> now that's the first step, that's getting rid of the white of the paper. Now well, let me see what we're doing on time here. Um, but I would then go to the, the dress here, and I'll tell you, I, in the photograph, I don't know if you can see it, there's um, mm -hmm. some texture in it. And I, I couldn't, I have this little very, very uh, stiff bristle thing about it. And I could put mac uh, uh, masking fluid on it, and but I can't find it. So I just took a brush and you know throw some stuff on it, uh, just to protect, give it a little bit of a texture. Um, so that's and the reason I'm doing that is because I can't work up in the hair just yet because it's wet. So oh. I can do the bottom guy here. And I'm just going to put one wash down, not not because I want to get to the hair in a second here. So we're just going to put a little water in there. And it's, it's, it's kind of a dark, very dark purple. Um, so I don't want it to be black, but uh, you know, let's, let's try to put something. And I, as I say, I have some masking fluid in here, and I don't, you got to kind of, again, white of the paper. And once it's on, all of a sudden the face starts to go back a little bit because right now it's, the, it's as dark as you can get it. It looks you know, really odd. With the rest of it, so we'll just okay. So all of your this... colors are pre-mixed. Yes, and I'll tell you why. Because um, maybe not for the first skin color, um, but the shadow sh color might take me an hour uh, of doing, you know, sw you know, thirty, forty swatches to say, is that the right one? And that would be quite time-consuming. <laughs> So I kind of simplify it for you here so you can get an idea of what I do when I paint and not have to spend it, you know, um, mixing paint. I mean, I think watching paint dry is about as exciting as watching somebody, you know, put some, <laughs> try to mix some paint. <laughs> Use a hair dryer at home? Uh, if I'm in a hurry, otherwise uh, I don't because Otherwise, I I gotta take a break. <laughs> so I get up, get a cup of coffee, go to the bathroom, get something to eat, turn the TV on while things are drying, because I, I get to a point on some things that exhausts me just to do a, a, a second. I oh I can't I quit. So so that's kind of where I was gonna go with that. And you can see the masking fluid in there now. I'll just darken quickly. It gives you a nice, if, as long as it's wet and wet, it gives you a nice edge. Uh, maybe do that to get a little bit of something in there. I won't go all the way down. Now, when, of course, when this is dry, I would take the masking fluid off. Now, I did make a mistake in the sense what I should have done <clears throat> is put this first wash down when it's bone dry, then put the masking fluid on so that I don't end up with a lot of white That's stuff true. looking at me. Um, you'll see in uh, wherever it is. I don't know what I do with it. Did I bring it? <laughs> I think it's in the, it's in my briefcase. <laughs> well, I did try to simplify that particular part. Now, <clears throat> the hair. I'm only going to do one section of the hair. Um, in fact, if Seward knows this, I said, if you want me to paint something, don't give me teeth. And don't give me hair, <laughs> because that's hair, teeth is a very difficult uh, 
thing to draw cor correctly. You, um, eighth of a millimeter off, and it's got buck teeth, or something's not right. And so it's very difficult to get there. A hair, on the other hand, is what we call real estate, a lot of real estate. So how do I simplify that? So I look at the photograph, and uh, I see there's a highlight in here. There's a section in here that's dark. Then there's another dark area, highlight. So what I try to do is I se separate these sections and do them separately. So for what I'll do tonight is just this, this part. Because so I'll never get to this part. Uh, and um, I want to make sure that, you know, show, I'll show you how to do it. And again, that's wet and wet also. And the, uh, uh, I, the objective is to um, <clears throat> make the hair not stringy or all hard edges, but smooth, which doesn't always work out that way. So what am I looking for here? Hmm. Oh, there is a color to the hair, the highlight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet all this area, <coughs> pre-wet it, and I'm going to come in with a highlight, well, you could call it a highlight color, which is slightly warmish gray, something in there. And then I'll come back in with my dark, I'll, I'll lay in some dark area, and I'll pull it with a smaller brush into the other area, just so it looks like streaks and stuff like that. Okay, so... I don't promise anything on this. <laughs> <laughs> We, we watercolorists understand. <laughs> oh, you do? Well, that's good. Yeah. All right. Anybody else now finally got, where's Mike? He's finally doing a portrait. So anyone else doing portraits? <laughs> no? Too scary. Okay. It's just another landscape with different shapes. That's easy for you to say, John. Huh? That's easy for you to say. Oh, did I set you up? I'm sorry. <laughs> I've done a couple. Oh, but, good. Yeah, my grandchildren. I forgot all about yeah, Did I paint I your that. portrait or I'd give you a drawing? Mm -hmm. Did I paint your portrait or I'd give you a drawing? And I took your portrait uh, workshop. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. I recognized the <clears throat> model. Yeah. I had something else planned, but uh, I ran out of time for prep, so I came back to my old standby, which is Sonia. I think that's a good one. <laughs> And as before I said, I, this is a, because it's a painting exercise and not a drawing exercise, I traced it. But I don't like doing it because I just like this, the, uh, the challenge of trying to get the drawing right. Because once the drawing's good, well, you could do watercolor, you could do a charcoal, you could do pastel. I did a pastel of that recently. Uh, as long as you got the drawing. Everything else can go for me. You can make multiple copies, aside from the fact that it you know, should look like the person you're... you're John, painting. was your hair ever that dark? No, <laughs> but <laughs> that's, What's an that's, ancestor, that's from a color photograph of the, of the family heirloom portrait that we have, which is now in the Baltimore yeah. Museum oh. of Art, which we donated, painted by um, a contemporary of... Peel and so forth back in 1814, and it's um, uh, John Wesley Jarvis is the artist. Oh. So I did a see you could call it a master copy. I don't know. Looks like the, the original copy, but I didn't bring the pastel one because that was clo more closely resembles the actual color. Um, back here, he looks like Lawrence Olivier. <laughs> uh, who, Lawrence Olivier? <laughs> He's quite a quite a gentleman. He, you know, I always think, hey, gosh, he looks like Tyrone Power. And uh, but he was in the Revolutionary War. He was a privateer. Uh, you know, during the um, uh, War of 1812, he, he wasn't very good at it because it turned out. <clears throat> Uh, and he has some Thomas Jefferson relationships in there, uh, but he he ended up two hundred fifty thousand dollars of debt. Can you imagine what that's worth in eighteen you know, fourteen. So, okay, so we're going to come in with a little bit of the highlight color.
John, is that a muffin tin or is that an actual towel? It's a muffin tin. It's yeah. uh, probably a four hundred dollar uh, piece of artwork or piece of art equipment. <laughs> it's just a muffin tin. That's a good idea. I thought about that myself. But you know, when I when I was flying airplanes, if you wanted to get you know get a part, they all had to be approved by the FAA. You couldn't just run out to your drugstore and get something. You know, like you know duct tape or something like that. It had to be all properly tested and so, and so forth. But, uh, you know, windshields, if you broke a windshield, the windshield would probably be $40,000. Um, when you do your car, windshield in your car, what's that? It's free, free insurance, so. <laughs> all right, so this is the hair color. This is, once again, let me get a nice fresh First, so John, is your MO to try and get those values right on the first pass? No. Absolutely not. Never can. There are some artists that you know can paint a la prima like that, I, uh, but I'm, I'm my temperament doesn't allow me to do it that way. I'm kind of a I don't know <laughs> cautious. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Now the the paint that's going on now is going is my palette. Think of it as your part of your palette, and not. Um, is that a black? No, it's a very very dark purple. And now we take the other brush. And we take it into that wet area. Trying to you know go go with the actual shape that you've got working there, and don't try to do too much with it. Um, because you're going to have plenty of time later on to work at it. And we'll leave that as it is now. Of course, I would go darker and use a, more of a dry brush technique um, with the second or third pass. And it's a dull color. So, although it's the first wash on the hair, it isn't going to be the final color, which I'll show you in the last step. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to disregard the what is that, the background. Back, I'll just show you what the color would have been anyway. I won't put it in, but I'll just show you. It's just a, it's what my first teacher used to call it the dynamic duo, which is ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. It makes a fantastic gray. You can go from cool to warm uh, as a gray. And um, let's see, where is it, this one here. Now this would be, you know, this would be wet and wet. You wouldn't, you wouldn't see it. But if I were to, you know, would go, that's quite dark. It wouldn't be that dark. But if you put it up against, you know, the hair area, and I'm just making this up as I go along here. You can see that the importance of getting rid of the white of the paper, because. Um, it pushes things back, and they're really on top of you before. But if you you know wait, get all this done first, uh, you know, then um, 
And the, the background isn't this dark. I'm just throwing it in so you, I can d demonstrate again what the importance of getting rid of the white of the paper is in understanding how what your values are supposed to look like, okay? So that's the first step. Everything needs to be dry after that because you don't want to go back in it. And, and, uh, so, any questions on that? Like, how did they do that again? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got to get the other things out of the. Uh... Where's your? Oh, can you see me on that thing? That's see my hand or something, right? I don't know if they haven't okay. been able to see. I don't know. They haven't complained up. or anything. I don't know. I'm going to show you how I attack some of the features, but not, I can't finish them, as you'll see. That's the best one for that. <laughs> so here's the first step, which would look like when it's done, right? It's now bone dry, okay? <coughs> and I don't really need this one anymore. <coughs> Here's where the fun begins. Now, all, I only got time for one eye. <laughs> and I don't know if you can see it. If you, if you wanted to come closer, that's, that's fine. Now, the drawing is a little dark, and that's important because I wanted you to see what um, the shapes are that I'm working with. And like all the other things, um, Wet and, wet and wet is how I will initially do the eye. <clears throat> and uh, three colors. <coughs> yeah, three colors. Uh, a gray for the white of the eye, which would be cerulean blue. And uh, a little uh, <coughs> rose matter genuine to gray it down a little bit. And then... Um, because she's got kind of brownish eyes, um, um, it's going to be straight burnt sienna initially, and then I'll just start darkening it by adding some uh, ivory black to the burnt sienna and so forth. And then straight ivory black for the pupil. So it's like three, three separate colors. And I don't know if you can see this. And this is the, well, it's a little dark, but that's what I would generally use as the color of the, can you see that? White of eyes. Not, mm -hmm. It's a little dark. That is some more water. Than that. But it, it dries lighter, right? Hmm? It dries lighter than that. Well, I don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm going to use. I'm not sure if it's the right gray. We're going to find out. <laughs> so let's see which one we're going to do. I have to go. This is too much. Let's do this one because that's closer to my eyeball here. So we go to, now there's a thing in the eye, there's a little bit of a highlight here. The light catches the, below the lid. So you want to, once you're, when you're actually doing your modeling later, you want to avoid going into that so that you catch the light. But we don't worry about it this time because we're not going that deep into it. So we'll just make it wet. And we go, wet all over the entire eye into the corners but we go around we you <laughs> if you do it <laughs> uh, around that highlight so you don't have to recover it later on maybe with a you know with a um, razor blade or some white gouache or something. Now we put the gray in, we start at the corners so that we det can determine how much the pigment's going to um, bloom in an area that you don't want it to bloom. Like for example, right now it looks like it's a little too wet. It, it's, 
stopped where I wanted it to, but I don't really want it to migrate into the iris. So I'm kind of let it sit a little bit while I get some straight burnt sienna here. And uh, let's get some ivory black. What, what combination of colors did you use first? Uh, was the cerulean blue and, and rose matter genuine to oh, okay. get to get a gray? Oh, I okay. you, you, you know, you, yeah. if it's too red, if it's too purple, what would you add to gray it down? You'd add yellow ochre. Uh, if it's too too red, well, then you would add um, yellow ochre and cerulean to make the green. So that's kind of the, the process. Oop, that's way too. John, how would you describe the, I've never used rose matter. What, Very that? transparent, it's a cool red. Um, very transparent, this is what it looks like, um, like, you know, really great lipstick. Very transparent, so you can lift it. Is that rain? Oh. All right, so that, I don't know if it's still wet, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so now we're going to come in with our... Uh, I don't want to get too close because I think I'm not sure. That, now, you always, now in this case, you start in the middle <clears throat> to make sure it doesn't spread too quickly. It's too, too far. I'm hard to see from back here. Did you say that your you did not go over the iris with your gray? Wine? I did not. Okay. Yeah. If, you know, if it migrates into the edges a little bit, I guess it's all right. But uh, if you want to come up and take a look, uh, be my guest. I I uh, encourage it because I know that it's kind of tedious and you can't see from way back there. And ordinarily, um, in some cases, at, at Essex we project. Our, um, you're doing it on Zoom, but I have a camera straight down and projecting it to a projector on a screen so that um, there wouldn't be um, any questions of like, where is that? You know, like people in the back of the room are like, where's the binocular? I used to bring binoculars to workshops and stuff so I could see <laughs> what was going on. <laughs> And we get a little darker there. Uh, that's too dark. You don't forget there's also a shadow cast by the um, eyelid onto the iris. And there's one other. Uh, I'm just going to. Continue that lid down a little bit and soften it a little bit. Now I'm going to come back in with the straight ivory black. I'm going to put the pupil in. Once again, you check to be sure that there's um, I'm going to leave that. Ooh. <laughs> <You know. laughs> yeah, I'm going to quit on that one, I think. <laughs> and uh, I'll have to just bring that little dark area down a little bit. <clears throat> because there is a circle that goes around the edge of the eye. And... Um, I don't, I don't know, a lot of stuff I make up as I go along, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't normally hear that, but... <laughs> I don't think the, the little circles around the edges of the eye, people, I think they tend to paint them... Um, completely all the way around, as opposed to making just a hint of it being there.
Okay, now that's like that's like not complete I, but the <coughs> the um, last thing I wanted to mention to you is that um, the I don't know if you can see it, but the lights hitting the pupil, but hitting the high, you know, the round of the eye, and the white highlight, the lights coming from here. So it goes through there, and it's got to come out the other side. So the bottom of the iris, opposite the um, highlight, should be just a tad lighter to show that it's back um, uh, coming through. It gives it, give it a, a form, a, a life that, you know, uh, <laughs> so how do you get the highlight in there? Is it in there now? Or? It's in there now. I just it would, It's a drawing, just a circle in the drawing. I just kind of went around it with the brush. Okay. You know, if you, if you screw up and you hit it, <clears throat> hit it with some white gouache or opaque gouache or something later on when you're done. But the, the most fantastic thing, and if you've done the portraits, you'll know that if I just painted this a flat eye, just the yeah. burnt sienna, darkened it, put the pupil in, and that's all you see is the pupil. You know, it's a person could, could, could be in a coffin somewhere. Yeah, lifeless. Yeah. As soon as you hit it with that, it's like, boom, it, it becomes, I'm looking at that, that's a pretty damn good eye, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and now you could actually, because it's dry in the gray area, you could, you could come back in and darken it, but according to the photograph, I don't always go by the photograph, to be honest. It's a little darker here in the corner than in the white of the eye. So I'm just going to darken that area a little bit. Do you always paint from a photograph? Yes, because um, I did one painting, my own personal drawing of a, it's, uh, um, 130 hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit still for myself for 130 hours, and neither is a model. So I do things for models like that one there started with a model, mm -hmm. but that's a three-day workshop. <laughs> okay. So I don't have the time, and none models don't have the time, and I certainly don't have the money to have them sit for hours while I try to figure out how to do something. So uh, I pay for photographs, but uh, only on rare occasions, which is this one where I, I um, trace the original photograph. I trace it. Uh, I always spend the time it takes to draw it. As I said, because now you've got the base drawing, you can always repeat it. Um, you could uh, do a different medium. You can change the size. Uh, that that paint drawing is probably the actual portrait itself is probably you know that big, and the head is yeah. that wow. big. So. Once I finished the drawing, I just took it down to Staples and, and uh, had them. Um, uh, uh, expanded or subtracted. So. The whites now the the eyelid is should be. I take a little cadmium red. You wanted a warm dark, so it's cadmium red and a little ivory black. That's more than a little bit. Well, it's the should be warm. Okay, we'll try that. And the one thing I haven't stressed really is the importance of um, so. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Okay, well, we'll just fix that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all sorry, Pastor. I don't know where you are. But <laughs> okay, we'll overlook that. We'll just say that that's a little glitch. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I've, I apologize. <laughs> anyway, so you want to try to spend some time considering whether a, a edge should be soft. In most cases, one edge of in anything is soft while another edge is hard. So in this case, I'm trying to soften the top edge of this lid 
so it sort of blends in with um, uh, the skin around it. Now the bottom lid, because there's more light in it, should be a little warmer. <clears throat> warm enough. And I gotta go right go around that highlight that, that hits the skin just below the eyeball there. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of rose or a little bit of cadmium red in the corners of the eyes in the tear tear duct area. <clears throat> Let it bleed a little bit. No, I, I, that's how they do. They're not bad. Uh, so that's it. I would leave that that eye and come back to it uh, later on. That's <clears throat> good. Here's a case where you're going to put in the shape. And then soften an edge. because later on you're going to come in with a shadow shape there. Okay, so that's the eye. Now, <clears throat> nostrils, they're warm. They're not black. They're dark, but they're warm. So I'm going to use the same combination I had for the, for the um, uh, lid, <laughs> which would be cadmium red. Oh, no, yellow something. I think I'm just going to use a little burnt, do some burnt sienna and uh, ivory black. Now, <clears throat> the thing I try to do is recognize that since the light's coming from this direction, this nostril should be a little warmer than that one that's in the shadow. Uh, I don't know how successful I'll be with that, but um, I'm going to throw a little bit of cadmium red on that when I finish it. Okay. Now, this is not the final, you know, um, darkness uh, that uh, we're going to be shooting. What am I painting anyway? I forgot already. The nostrils. Ah! <laughs> 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 yes, okay, that's yeah. pathetic. <laughs> okay, so we, we're going to put a little in there. And then I'm going to add just a tad of some red as it comes out of there into the light. And then we'll soften an edge. God, we put a nostril in, all of a sudden she's coming. You know, it's the eye. Mm -hmm. You'll see. It's just like, wow. <laughs> Just, 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 Let's go just a little darker there. I'm going to turn this upside down so I have control over where the wash goes. I do a lot of upside down painting too because this is how I use it to control where a wash is going to go sometimes where I want it darker in an area before it becomes too light. Well, I'll do the same one over here. I guess it may be there. So what are running down the... Uh, surface in the paper is not an issue with that steep incline you got there? Uh, no, 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 because um, the arch's paper is really good as far as, uh, you can get a great, you can get a great drip that'll stop because it's not wet below it, it stops right there. <clears throat> Occasionally, you know, if you're wet and wet, you're going to lose some control, but um, uh, Am I, am I still in the, am I in the way? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Get a little. Yeah, I should say this is Arches 140 pound mm -hmm. um, cold press. Mm -hmm. I've used uh, hot press. Hate it. I've used, um, I did a painting uh, of a guy with a cell phone sitting on the steps or something. I used, I thought I would, because I didn't want to stretch the paper, I used 300 pound 
And uh, that came out pretty good, except that I don't like 300 pound because I seem to have a hard time stretching, or not stretching, softening an edge. Oh, yeah. Like 300 pound hot press would work? Cold press. Oh, cold cool. press. Hot press uh, seems to me that they don't have enough sizing in it, so it, it becomes a timing issue with how much water uh, um, you put in. Now those sketch, what the crappy sketchbooks, I don't know where they go. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> That's the worst friggin' paper I've yeah. ever oh, used. Oh, oh, <laughs> and uh, no. you, you put something, put some, put a wash down in it. <laughs> It's, yep. it's dry as a hell of an edge. You can't do it. So the reason I put in do mo those silly sketches in the sketchbook is because it doesn't. I don't have to worry about it all that much. I can just work on the drawing, get the sketch thing. What the heck? Didn't come out right. Nobody knows. So that's a god awful paper. <laughs> but arches are fantastic. But the arches stopped making their sketchbook. <clears throat> Aha! They did. But they may be making a test case because I found a small, a new one, green cover, 140 pound, but it's a sketchbook using 100, cold press 140 pound, a little spiral mount thing. It's like mm, maybe 8 by 5 by 8 or something, kind of a bad size. But they may be trying to figure out, maybe we should get back into this market because there are a lot of other sketchbooks out there. So I hope so because that one of those books is an Archer's book. I uh, forget which one it is. So, Okay, so that's the nostril. And uh, now what about the lips? <clears throat> so we're just going to do a quick wash on the... How am I doing on time here? You guys want to get something to eat, right? Oh, I'm going to go to the next step. Okay. You can, you can stay a little longer since we took a lot of your time. It's, it should be okay. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, I'll try to put a quick wash in on the on the lips, which is going to be a combination of cadmium red and a little alizarin crimson. Maybe maybe some rose matter there and a little alizarin. It's going to be too red, so I'm going to have to gray that down with maybe a little blue, little cerulean. And this will just be a first pass. Do you normally do? Hmm? How many layers of paint do you normally put on? I don't know. Until it's done. Okay. <laughs> a lot of this <laughs> final work that you'll see, I'll describe it in the other one, is, it's all dry brush. Because I, I don't have, um, I, the more washes you put down, the more risk you take and lifting what's below it. Now, or I do usually do these wet and wet. So let's see if I get lucky with you. This is the lines are a little dark. That's so you can see them. And um, But they're very difficult to get up, so even though um, you've got the drawing done, you've got to lift the drawing and then redraw it when you paint. Otherwise, you'll get these, you know, hard lines. You can see it, you know, developing already. <clears throat> There's a little bit of a highlight in there somewhere. In there. The bottom lip will be a little lighter than the top, but we can throw in a little, little, little bit of darkness in here. Bless you. Thank you. And we're going to throw a little of this in on the bottom here. Save a highlight. Yeah, I think I'll throw a little, a little brilliant orange in there. <laughs> Look how beautiful this orange is. 
This is this is brilliant orange, and I don't know the name of it. It's my Mary or somebody. Anyway, that's, that's kind of bright, but that's fantastic orange. It mixes beautifully, and you can lift it all you want. So I'll be using it in the next step. And they throw a little in the corner. Of course, we need a, a dark line, and I don't, I really have trouble doing the line, you know, the lip, the lip, uh, lip thing in here. And uh, I don't know why it's, uh, I, maybe I just do too much, um, put the complete line in instead of this, the, the impression of a line being there. Now this might spread. Let's see. Well, it seems to be holding up pretty good, but it, it, this will help define what the lip is doing. See, it's spreading, so not a terrible thing to happen, but. And then you go to the corners. I'm gonna just do a little here, stop, come around, and then right to the corner where this, most of the accent's gonna be. Oh, not bad. Anyway, so that's all I'm going to do on this guy. Um, uh, where's the other one? Don, yeah. you showed that to us? Oh, Sorry. This speaking to me. <laughs> They'd like yes, you to answer your see. question. Can you hold it up? Hold the other can't the screen. Yeah, this, where, where's your camera? Right there? Yeah. So that, that's harsh, you know, hardly anything done on that, but it helps understand how I did the eye, the nostrils, and, and the mouth. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you. And uh, this, is, <clears throat> this is not finished, but more of a completed step so that you can see how I might uh, continue uh, modeling the features. Okay? Okay. So I've done both eyes here. <clears throat> Uh, you can see it's a little grayer here because in the photograph you'll see it's almost hidden with the, oh, it's almost hidden with the, uh, <laughs> you know, like you can see through the painting. <laughs> it's only hidden right in there, so I darken that up a little bit. Um, nostrils good. Okay, so here's where I start doing things that I want to do and not what the photograph wants me to do. <clears throat> Uh, first thing is, this area, although it looks quite light in the photograph, I don't like it that way. <laughs> so I'm going to do my own thing on that. So I'm going to do a uh, wet and wet um, uh, wash of the brilliant orange because... Um, it's going to catch the highlight of the light coming down onto the cheek. And then I'm going to bring, the, bring it down in here and then bring the yellow ochre down into this area to give it some volume. Otherwise, it's quite flat. So. We don't need too much for that. Okay. And we'll do this wet and wet, because it's bone dry and you can get away with it. Now, it, I want the orange here, but I don't want to place it there yet, because I want to move, soften it into that area, so I'm not exactly going to um, follow that shape initially. Tap it with a loop. Watch this. This is so fantastic. That looks, it looks too dark, and it is, but not for long. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And the one thing about your wash is try to keep the brush on the paper rather than lifting it. That's a little too dark, but um, if I go back into it now to lighten it, I think it's going to be a mistake. So let's see if I can make a mistake. Uh, not lifting the brush is advantageous to what? Your uh, failure to get a streak. You won't get the, so if you pick it up and then come over it again, unless you're making a, a uh, large <coughs> graded wash. Uh, if you put the, let's like say I put the, um, didn't put, use a wet on wet approach to control the wetness of the edges. And I just put down the first wash, pick the brush up and start in another one. They wouldn't, they wouldn't come together beautifully. They okay. would, uh, you it could end up with a streak. Okay. And so the idea is just to keep the brush on the paper, you know, modeling around and so forth as opposed to uh, do, doing that. Mm -hmm. And then you can come back in later on and soften the edges out a little bit. <clears throat> now the muzzle area, that's this, this guy right in here. If you look closely <clears throat> at people and you can see it clearly on the second, the, the furthest one out there, is a lot of green in there. Um, and so I just use a little yellow ochre <clears throat> and a little cerulean. And it's a very pale, very pale green. <clears throat> uh, where do I want it? I think I want it there. I say, now I've picked the brush up, but because it's still wet over there, I could probably get away with it. But if I kept it on the on the paper, then I, I have better control of the final edge. Okay, I'm going to leave that. Uh, the nose, well, first of all, the bridge of the nose, I'm going to do with two colors there. There I'm going to use again that, that brilliant orange. <laughs> And uh, yellow ochre, I think so. Because, you know, it comes into the light, it gets warmer. It goes away from the light, it gets cooler. Now, I'm not, in this case, I'm not, I, 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 you can see I kind of tried that here. It's a little warmer, a little cooler here because it's shadow. But um, uh, we're going to do the same thing over here. You're going to go next to the highlight. And then I'm going to bring down some yellow ochre. Or, what is that, green? Eesh. Well, we'll try green, I don't know. And that helps bring the nose, uh, no, no, not that way, this way, forward. <laughs> and there's a, <clears throat> always a warm spot somewhere on the tip of your nose, so. Uh, that's the thing that really brings it forward if you throw a little warmth in that area. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, under the nose, this shadow shape here in the nose should be um, maybe a tad darker. <clears throat> so we're going to do with, uh, let's see, what am I going to use here? A little cerulean. Take a little. What, rose matter? Nah, a little rose matter. And some, some yellow ochre, a little warmer. And a little bluer. Yeah. And then I'm going to make, as it comes out of the shadow, it should be a little warmer as it comes out of the shadow. So you prepare your, you pre, 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 prepare your puddle before you need it. <clears throat> so 
John, it seems like when you laid down that first pass, you have a pretty set uh, method with your palate, right? Certain uh, combinations to get that first set of flesh tone. Yes. And then when that's dry, this glazing process that you're going through right now, do you have the same kind of fixed palate, or do you, do you change it up? Or how, how uh, you still, you can. Uh, well, yes. I mean, you, I'm still using the same colors before, maybe not in a, uh, you know straight like cerulean by itself, but the, the this uh, greenish area here with cerulean yeah. and so forth. So I'm used, still using the same kind of stuff, but um, sometimes I might use cobalt. I don't know if you can see it, but I made a mistake here as the last step. You probably can't, thank God you can't see it. Uh, it's a case where. I went wet and wet with the shadow, and because my shadow color has cerulean in it, okay, you can see what's going to happen. The um, cerulean mixed well on, in the in that, but as soon as I put it on the paper, it started to separate. Now it's you know texture's fine and all that if that's what you want, but um, you can get rid of it. But uh, you know that's kind of kind of really slow. Uh, okay, last thing I'm going to do is, is let's get something under the eye here, because I know that these want the eyes will look better when there's a shadow shape on them. I know. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Do one more thing, and then um, if she definitely needs something, you know what it is. <laughs> yeah, you know what it is. <laughs> okay, I'll just I'll just show you. <laughs> Okay, that's not, not the, correct, the correct color, but you can't go in here without eyebrows. Or eye, are they eyebrows? What are they? Yeah, they're eyebrows. And you're just trying to get the kind of local color in there. Now, in this little, am I in the way? I thought it was. This little section in here, the light's going to hit it. So, I'm go up to it slightly. And then away from it, another spot where it might get tend to get a little darker as it comes down. <clears throat> but to re represent that little change in highlight, I just grab that. This is now my new palette right here. And uh, maybe, and then soften this edge. Yeah, well, let's do the other one because it makes sense. It'll look, it'll look so much better with a mirror, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Now, this will be the last thing I'll do because I'm, I'm getting hungry. I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get any blue paint on this guy here. I actually, da actually did that once. This, this drawing that I sell portrait that I did all graphite on um, on uh, Bristol plate which is a very smooth um, paper <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I go every Thursday when I go up to Connecticut or kind of um, in New York, five or six of us to get together, working on our own stuff on our own time. And I'm working on this self-portrait that someone had um, doing an oil painting. And somehow I picked up, just like I did before, I picked up whatever that blue was, ultramarine. And I had the drawing on the, on the paper. And it was in pretty good shape for me to start rendering it, you know, shadow shapes and all that. And uh, so I'm, blah, 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 I'm turning around, doing something, and I come back. Boy, I had hit the paper 
with the oil paint. Oh. Sm you know, small stuff. <laughs> and I already probably had hours already into it. And you might have seen the drawing. I might have had it in one of our shows. I don't know. It's, but, but it's all graphite meat, you know, like this with a hat on. <laughs> but so I had to go back and start all over. But I had the drawing. And the original drawing was simply taking the paper, putting it back on the Bristol plate, and retracing it. So if you ever screw up, make sure you have a, you know, you screw your painting up, you want to do it, you always get a drawing done, save the drawing, and then use it to trace or whatever you want later. And that, uh, that's, that's, a, that's, that's all I'm going to do tonight. I hope you enjoy it. And I thank you very much for the opportunity. Oh, I don't know. There's one of that's not much to see there. <laughs>